This reading is from the Unitarian Universalist Association website. Unitarian Universalist congregations affirm and promote seven principles, which we hold as strong values and moral guides. We live out these principles with a living tradition of wisdom, spirituality, drawn from sources as diverse as science, poetry, scripture, and personal experience. As Reverend Barbara Wells Tenhove explains, the principles are not dogma or doctrine, but rather a guide for those of us who choose to join and participate in Unitarian Universalist religious communities. We affirm and promote our first principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Second, justice, equality, and compassion in human relations. Third, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. Fourth, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Fifth, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. Six, the goal of the world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And finally, our seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Unitarian Universalism draws from many sources for spiritual growth and substance. Direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, which moves us to a renewal of the spirit and openness to the forces which create and uphold life. Words and deeds of prophetic people, which challenge us to, comfort, <clears throat> to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. Wisdom from the world's religion, which inspires us in our ethical and spiritual life. Jewish and Christian teachings, which call us to respond to God's love by loving our neighbors and ourselves. Humanist teachings, which counsel us to heed the guidance of reason and the results of science and warn us against idolatries of the mind and spirit. Spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions, which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. The times, they are a changing. Unitarian Universalism, our religious tradition, is not based on any creed or dogma, no statement you have to believe in order to become a member. However, Unitarian Universalism description has changed over the past 200 years of Unitarians, Universalists, and Unitarian Universalist existence. As many of you know, our current Unitarian Universalism was born of two separate faiths that merged into one. Unitarianism with the belief that there was one God, not three in one, and that Jesus was human. And Universalism, which believed that all souls would be reunited with God in heaven. In the late 19th century, these beliefs began to change, and a more theologically pluralistic and humanistic understanding of what Unitarianism and Universalism began to develop. By the time 1961 rolled around and Unitarianism and Universalism combined today into what we call the Unitarian Universalist Association, this pluralism and humanism became very ingrained in our faith. But here's one thing that people even in 1961 asked, what is it that holds us together as a religion if it is not a common belief? And they decided it was our shared values 
which became our principles. When I joined my first Unitarian Universalist church in 1979, I don't remember anyone talking about the principles of Unitarian Universalism. As a matter of fact, in the new member class that Martha, my lovely wife, and, and I took, the class leader gave us what was called a Rankin card. It was a pull-out card you could show people when they asked what Unitarian Universalism was. The card had quotes from Reverend David Rankin about his view of Unitarian Universalism. And his quotes included ideas like freedom of religious expression, tolerance of religious ideas, the authority of reason and conscience, a search for truth, a unity of existence, the worth and dignity of each person, the ethical application of religion, the motive force of love, the necessity of the democratic process, and the importance of religious community. At that time, I had no idea that there was a set of principles written into the Unitarian Universalist bylaws in 1961 describing what Unitarian Universalism is. They were never discussed in my new member class or from the pulpit, but I wanted to share them with you today. Here are the 1961 Six Principles of Unitarian Universalism. The first is to strengthen one another in a free and disciplined search for truth as the foundation of our religious fellowship. The second is to cherish and spread the universal truths taught by the great prophets and teachers of humanity in every age and tradition, and memorably summarized in the Judeo-Christian heritage as love to God and love to man. The third was to affirm, defend, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality, the dignity of man, and the use of the democratic method in human relations. The fourth was to implement our vision of the, war, of the one world by striving for a world community founded on ideals of brotherhood, justice, and peace. The fifth was to serve the needs of member churches and fellowships to organize new churches and fellowships and to extend and strengthen liberal religion. And lastly, the sixth was to encourage cooperation with men of goodwill in every land. Before we go and talk about those a little bit more, I want to take an aside. As I said earlier, these 1961 six principles and our present seven principles that we affirm today were never and are not intended to be prescriptive. In other words, you do not have to profess a belief in them to be a member of a Unitarian Universalist church or congregation. But they are descriptive of what values Unitarian Universalists generally hold and the values that hold us together. And many Unitarian Universalists today see our present version of the principles as moral and ethical guidelines. The seven principles can help us check in with ourselves and check in as a, as a community as we make personal and communal decisions so that we have some moral or ethical consistency in how we approach life. The seven principles, despite being general value statements, can ground us in our spiritual journey. Within Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist Bylaws, it states we need to revisit these principles every 15 years to determine if they still describe who we are and what holds us together as a faith. 
And just to let you know, the Unitarian Universalist Association hasn't always been reviewing the principles every 15 years. Instead, it's kind of happened in fits and starts. In the years after 1960, the 1961 principles were ratified and adopted, it probably comes as no surprise that Unitarian Universalist women and, and some men had been growing unhappy with the blatantly sexist language of the original bylaws, including words like the dignity of man. The 1970 years were when the women's movement was gathering momentum. And there was a move to remove offensive terminology, male-centered, misogynistic terminology. So in the 1974 version of the Unitarian Universalist bylaws and principles, excised were references to the moderator and president and, and any officer or minister as he. Though the words brotherhood and fellowship survived into the 1980s. The main impetus for this changing language was the UU Women's Federation. But within Unitarian Universalism, many Unitarian Universalists wanted more comprehensive changes to these principles. They wanted to continue removing sexist language and to separate our value statement from the sources from which we draw for spiritual sustenance. Please keep in mind at each stage of the development of these principles, that there was a lot of discussion, considerable conflict, and moments of grace and goodwill. The Unitarian Universalist seven principles and five sources were voted, ratified, and accepted in 1985. What, you say there are six sources? Well, that's true. The sixth source, earth-centered traditions that we draw from for our spiritual sustenance and growth was voted in to the bylaws in 1989. That's why if you look in our, our gray hymnals in the front where it has the principles and sources, you will find seven principles and five sources. But these principles and sources are now part of our culture. They are on the walls of our churches. They are preached about from our pulpits. I preach about them in one form or fashion almost every Sunday. And yet, after 35 years, I wonder if they still describe who we are, what holds us together. Perhaps, perhaps it has something to do with my having attended the denominational meeting, General Assembly in 2009 in Salt Lake City. It was the 48th annual General Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association. We elected a new president, we adopted six social justice resolutions, and the delegates voted down an attempt by the Commission on Appraisal to completely revise the Unitarian Universalist Statement of Principles and Sources. I was a delegate there, part of the discussion, and to let you know, the revised principles were voted down by a margin of 13 votes. Thirteen. Before going to General Assembly, I remember educating my congregation on these new principles 
I remember in particular one that was talking about not misappropriating traditions, rituals, or beliefs from other religious traditions. I remember as we talked about it, both in my church and at General Assembly, that people were saying things like, these revised principles are too wordy, or, or too specific, or weren't easy to say, or made describing Unitarian Universalism more difficult than it already was. But I noticed I noticed at that General Assembly that the people who were advocating for these new principles were youth and young adults. They were looking for change. Within the past few years, there have been some wording changes in the principles and sources. For instance, a couple of years ago, the sources were changed from words and deeds of prophetic men and women which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love, changed to words and deeds of prophetic people to reflect the change in non-binary understanding of gender terms. Things are changing. Sexual genders, our understanding of them, are changing. And we need to look at our values and our sources through those eyes. I emphatically affirm and promote our seven principles and six sources. And I, I think the principles and sources that we presently have are broad enough for us to engage with individually and collectively. And they're specific enough for us to use in grounding our decision making and for use in our own personal and communal spiritual direction. And I'm not sure if I'm ready for them to change. I will admit at the 2009 meeting that I voted for the new principles and sources. I was moved by the young people who were advocating for this change. I wasn't persuaded by the wording, but by the people who were looking for something different who saw universalism, Unitarian Universalism through different eyes, who saw the future of Unitarian Universalism and wanted us to go that way with these new words. And even today, there's this move within Unitarian Universalism to revisit those principles once again. to see if they do describe who we are today, what, what calls us together today. And there's an eighth principle that people are advocating for. The eighth principle is we, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association covenant to uh, affirm and promote journeying, journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. Some of the same concerns that bubbled up in 2009 are bubbling up today. Some say the eighth principle is too wordy. Others question the need to change our principles. They work so well for us right now, as they are. Some say this eighth principle is already contained in our first principle, affirming and promoting the inherent worth and dignity of every person. 
As with anything going on within Unitarian Universalism, there is no universal agreement on how to proceed. Some Unitarian Universalist congregations have adopted into their own bylaws this eighth principle. Some are waiting to see what happens in the next few years as this principle comes before the General Assembly of all the affiliated congregations. Some don't want this to change. They don't want another principle, and they will resist it on principle. We are a faith of flux and change. And to be honest, I know we always will be. We have a history of being calling heretics because we are changing all the time. Our beliefs are not grounded as other religions are. We have difficulty describing who we are and what holds us together because we change. We open our minds and hearts as change happens in our world and we understand ourselves better and we understand the world better or differently. I've described our faith to others as one based on values rather than specific beliefs with the understanding that what holds us together today may be different tomorrow. I know, I know change means risk. People might leave our faith because we change our principles. People might fear controversy if we change, could split our congregations or, or, or our denomination. People don't come to church wanting discomfort and controversy or struggle or change. They come for comfort and consistency in an ever-changing world. I wonder, I wonder if my blinders are on as I look at our seven principles and six sources. After all, they've been part of my life and my spiritual journey and my ethical foundation for 35 years. Can they be better? Probably. Should we have an eighth principle? I can only speak for myself. I can tell you that I embrace the Eighth Principle because it helps me. You see, I take those principles and sources and I hold them in the front of my mind as I journey through life, and they help me. An Eighth Principle regarding anti-racism and anti-oppression, if I hold that in the front of my mind as I work and live in the world, it will keep me grounded with those values. Can I say that I have issues, I will have issues if we change the principles? I don't know. I want to be willing and open. I know that change will come one day a change that will better describe who we are and what holds us together. What do you feel about updating or changing our principles or, or adding an eighth principle? Do the principles we have work for you? These principles and sources, do they help you in your spiritual journey? What about this eighth principle? Would it aid you? And I wonder, this eighth principle, is it something that we as a congregation want to add to our bylaws so that it is a grounding force about how we work in the world? These are all questions that, that we individually and collectively have to answer for ourselves. 
Ours is a dynamic faith. This dawning of a new or revised Unitarian Universalist principle statement or sources offers us a chance to see the world differently. And perhaps realize our dreams of a more inclusive Unitarian Universalism, offering possibilities of new people finding a message from Unitarian Universalism that speaks to them. It might hold new understandings of what holds us together and what we might aspire to individually and collectively. I know change is disconcerting, but maybe, maybe we will find in the change that I know will eventually happen, a renewal, a renewal of our dreams in the possibilities they present and in the promises of our personal and communal growth and learning as we move in to the future together. My friends, the future awaits.